Good morning, and welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee, for our virtual services from the sanctuary. My name is Reba Dawkins, and I'd like to welcome our members and our guests to our 50th live streaming worship service on February 14, 2021, Valentine's Day. The First United Methodist Church of Madisonville, Tennessee, during this streaming worship service is either performing musical material published prior to 1925 and in the public domain, or performing musical material by permission of CCLI. Appropriate credit is posted at the bottom of each slide displaying copyrighted material, which is intended for the purpose of congregational singing. FUMC holds a CCLI license to stream this material Copies of our licenses are in file in the church office. Today's flowers are in memory of Shane Cavett's father, Steve. Whether you are watching live or the recording on Facebook or YouTube afterward, on the homepage, click on the attendance tab at the top or under the hamburger icon at the top left of your mobile device, answer the questions and click OK. Please continue to keep our reopening task force in your prayers as we move forward with plans to open our church building up for in-person worship service starting on March 14th, provided that the number of new COVID-19 cases are declining the two weeks prior to the 14th. A letter from Pastor Keith will be sent out to all of our members and attendees the beginning of next week with more information. <coughs> The March-April issues of the Upper Room are in the white tote at the front entrance to our sanctuary. Please stop by at your convenience and pick up a copy for yourself, your family, and your friends as long as they are available. If you want the digital copy, please email me and I will get it to you. Pastor Keith is producing a weekly Bible study lesson on video and episode 15 is up for you to enjoy when you have a quiet moment. Go to our website at 1umcm.com and look at the new video content or go to the Our Pastor tab. The Good Shepherd Center's needs are green beans of, and any kind of canned tomato products. The blessing box that is installed downstairs in our lower parking lot uh, is heavily visited and needs all of us to stock it up. We need things like shelf-stable foods, canned products, health and beauty aids such as toothpaste, toothbrush, maybe some deodorant, uh, some hand lotion this time of year with the weather the way it is. So we ask that you just be generous when you shop, pick up a few things and drop them off in our box and help us out. And now we ask you to digitally greet the members of our church, family, and our guests via text or Facebook message and may the peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. Our call to worship this morning is majesty, worship his majesty. The words and music you will find in the downloadable affirmation and hymnal link in the stuff you'll need for online worship uh, on our homepage. And it's also, the words will be on your screen. Join me.
Good morning. Our written call to worship is from the Psalms of the Old Testament. You can we can read those along together. I'll I'll, I'll read and, and you'll answer. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He gives, he gives wisdom, wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Let us join together in singing our, our first congregational hymn, our first hymn of praise for the beauty of the earth. Sunday, we share an affirmation of faith to remind us of what Christians, the basics of what Christians have believed since the day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Today, we want to share that earliest statement of faith that, that it shares the teaching of the apostles from their earliest years, the Apostles' Creed. Christian, if you are asked what you believe, you may answer I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, 
From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. said we welcome you to our online worship here at First United Methodist Church. My name is Keith Knight. I'm the pastor here at First Church in Madisonville. And we're glad that you could join us and, and take part in our worship and praise this morning as we all uh, call the Lord to be a little closer to us and for us to be a little closer to the Lord. We, we thank you for joining us and we want to mention a, a, a one joy that's among us. Uh, we want to say congratulations to Cooper Strickland. He was named to the District 5 AA All-District Basketball Team. Cooper is a junior at Sequoia High School, has a, is having a fantastic season, and uh, we are just excited as all, uh, as all get out that he is doing so well. And so we, we hope and pray that all the students in high school, in middle school, and in the elementary schools are doing well uh, during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And, and as we hope more and more people are being vaccinated day by day in Monroe County and across this country and around the world, uh, we hope that uh, and pray that we will continue to uh, uh, make progress against this uh, dangerous virus and be able to uh, maybe even get back to worship as, as Reva mentioned uh, uh, our target date is March the 14th Sunday March the 14th the second Sunday of, of March and if uh, the number of uh, COVID-19 cases in Monroe County uh, are going down or at least plateaued uh, those two weeks before March 14th, we'll be able to join together here again. But we are limited to a 25% of total capacity, which is about 58 persons. So uh, uh, mark that down on your calendar. We hope to see you on March the 14th. And, uh, and may God bless you as you continue to worship with us through this online uh, worship service. We do have a number of prayer concerns we want to ask you to be praying about. Uh, we, we certainly want you to be praying for the Peters family. Dwayne passed away very early yesterday morning. He'd been combating cancer for uh, five or six or, or, or more years. And uh, his obituary is now online at Byerly Hale website. The funeral arrangements will be private, but uh, when I uh, was at Carolyn's house, Carolyn Peters' house, yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. Um, Carolyn told me that uh, they hope to, uh, uh, maybe in late spring, May or, or something, in late April or, or May, have a celebration of Dwayne's life at the farm near the house. So we'll let you know more about it when a date gets set and we get closer to that date. So be in prayer for the Peters family. Also pray for the Cabot family. Uh, the service and burial for Shane's father, Steve Cabot, was Friday in Loudoun. Uh, keep Hunter in your prayers. I spoke to him at, at the end of the funeral. Um, unfortunately, his, his grandfather had passed away on Hunter's 15th birthday. So keep the, keep the whole family in your prayers, especially Hunter. He, he has a, a, a good attitude. He, of course, loves his grandfather. He's, Good man, great man. And uh, so, so keep them in your prayers. Also remember to pray for Kate Grubb. She is still in ICU at UT Hospital. 
Uh, it seems a little bit like one step forward and two or three steps backwards sometimes. But Kay woke up and ate some mashed potatoes for Leanne. I think it was last night. So keep praying. Uh, Joe is at home at, uh, at, at John Grubb's house and uh, he's doing well. And Sam is still at uh, Madisonville Nursing and Rehab. So keep the whole family in prayer. Emma Tate. Uh, spent several days at the hospital, but now is back at Dominion in Athens. So pray for Emma. I'm sure she would love to take a phone call from them. Continue to pray for the Williford family. Uh, Faye Watson is, is right now at Madisonville Nursing and Rehab Center as she rehabs from a stroke. So keep Faye Watson in your prayers. And Storm Millsap has been under the weather for a little while. So pray for Storm. Uh, Margaret Marshall, uh, I'm not sure how much I should say, but uh, uh, they put her cancer treatments on hold. She uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Bob did not. So keep Margaret and Bob Marshall in your prayers. Uh, and Mary Kefauver has said that her son, their son Josh, who lives in New Mexico, has tested positive for COVID-19. So keep Josh and his family in your prayers. Also, remember Regina Warfeld. Uh, she'll be having surgery on the 15th. Um, she's, uh, I spoke to her about a few days ago. She's not too worried, but, uh, but do keep her in your prayers uh, tomorrow. Uh, also, continue to pray for Maria Nelson, Ray and Dora Nelson's sister-in-law. They've stopped her cancer treatments, and uh, please be praying for, for her and the family. I pray for the families of Dennis Montooth and Hugh Harrison, and continue to pray for Clifton Greenwood, Alfred Greenwood's brother, as he continues to his battle with cancer. Clifton lives in Georgia. Uh, Kevin Shaw is asking for prayers for his grandmother, Jean White. And uh, continue to pray for Janet Tweed's father, Paul Robbins, and her sister, Kathy Carroll. Uh, continue to pray for Jordan Watkins and family as she recovers from her surgery last week. Uh, continue to pray for Clifford Talent, a friend of Jan Lowry's. And continue to, to pray for the, uh, David and Mary Kefauver's friend, Cooper, Book, Cooper Burks. And pray for cabinet friends, Kim Hughes and Lisa and Fred Cheney. Uh, continue to pray for Lindsay Lazeski and her family as she recuperates from her foot surgery. And pray for all those who are battling cancer. Mabel Graham, Dora Nelson, Pat Harvey, Debbie Denton, Beatrice Irwin, Barbara Raper, and their families and, uh, and others. Also remember to pray for Otis Thornton and continue to pray for Kristen Pennington's grandfather, Jack. If there are no other prayer concerns that we want to share today, let us bow our heads and hearts and go to the Lord with our prayers. Shall we pray? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you are holy and you are the God of heaven and earth. Your love for us is beyond anything we can ever hope or imagine. We have you have demonstrated the depth of your love to us by sending us a Savior, your very own Son. And your mercy is not bound by time or space, for the Savior of believers almost 2,000 years ago is still our Savior today. We praise your holy name for the Savior who was born and, and for the God who loves us so deeply. And on this Sunday, that we remember the transfiguration of Jesus as we remember the beginning of Lent this Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. Help us, Lord, to always remember what great sacrifice Jesus willingly faced for each and every one of us. Holy, holy, holy are you, O God of heaven and earth. We lift up to you our prayer concerns. We pray, Lord, for our nation and our world as we combat against this uh, dangerous virus, this COVID-19, this pandemic that has, has swept the earth. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless the, the public health professionals, the doctors and nurses who all work to keep us all healthy. We pray that you will keep them healthy. And we pray, Lord, that the, that, uh, the companies that are producing vaccines might continue to produce their vaccines even faster, uh, that new vaccines will be approved if they 
prove uh, to be effective against this virus. And we pray, Lord, that more and more people in our country and in other countries and around the world may be vaccinated in the days and weeks and months to come until we simply drive this, uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus into extinction. We pray, Lord, that, that through, the, through the efforts of everyone to wear masks and uh, wash their hands and, and keep somewhat distant from one another, and all the vaccines that continue to be put into arms in the days ahead, we pray, Lord, that all that will defeat this, uh, this virus and that it will uh, uh, run back into the uh, uh, annals of history and no longer trouble us anymore, or at least not be any more trouble than the seasonal flu. We pray, Lord, as well, that, uh, that you will uh, bless the leaders of this nation of both political parties. We pray, Lord, that uh, the new president and administration, that the leaders in Congress of both parties, Congress and House of Representatives and the Senate, might be willing to work together Lord, to provide for the leadership our nation needs and continues to, 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 to want. Lord, we pray that, that you will show your grace and mercy to all those in need, especially to those who are struggling to put food on the table and are concerned about their, their, their rent or their, their house payments. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the uh, the efforts of the Good Shepherd Center and all who volunteer there many hours a week. And we pray, Lord, that all who donate to Good Shepherd Center, all the, the churches in this area and all the people of goodwill, we pray, Lord, that you will bless the gifts and bless those who give, that uh, the needs of those who are, who are less fortunate uh, might be met. We ask, oh Lord, that you continue to bless and comfort those who have lost loved ones in recent days and weeks. We pray, Lord, that the peace and comfort of your Holy Spirit will be about their lives and help them know the assurance of, of life in Christ and the assurance of everlasting uh, life and eternal life through Jesus our Lord. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us to each day to pray about these concerns and others of which we know people in our community, folks in our families, friends, neighbors, uh, and those that we don't know well. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to pray each and every day for all these persons. And we remember that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, even as he taught his disciples to pray, and, and still teaches us today to pray with the words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Well, if you could have the boys and girls among you come closer to the view screen, we're going to uh, share a, a, a message with them in a couple of minutes. First, we want to sing the hymn, Take Time to Be Holy. You'll sing that along with us, and then bring the little ones up near the screen, and we'll take some time with them. Take Time to Be Holy.
All right. If the boys and girls, the children, grandchildren, whatever, can gather around, let me ask you another question today. Did Jesus ever do anything wrong? Well, we know from the Bible that Jesus was tempted like any other person is tempted. That's in Matthew chapter 4, and in Luke chapter 4, and, 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 and in Mark chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. But we also know that because Jesus is the Son of God, he never gave in to temptation. In fact, the book of Hebrews, towards the end of the New Testament, tells us, but we have a high priest, we have a Savior, who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. He never did anything wrong, not even once. He chose always to do God's will, to do what is right. Now, Jesus was fully human. At the same time, Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus meant that he and God are one and the same. When Jesus was tempted to do wrong, he prayed and asked God to help him. Jesus loved and trusted God, and God answered his prayers. Because Jesus suffered when he was tempted, he's able to help us when we are tempted too. Again, it says that in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, towards the back of the, Old Test the New Testament. It says, because Jesus himself was suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Because Jesus was perfect and never sinned, he didn't live for money or fame. All Jesus wanted to do during his life on earth was to do his Father's will. All Jesus wanted to show, all, all he wanted was to show the world how much God loves them. And Jesus wants to help us to love God back. Well, then let's pray and ask Jesus to help us to love God back and to walk with God. Shall we? Let's pray. Almighty God, our gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you that you have sent us a Savior who chose each and every day to do your will and to never do anything wrong. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will help us to love God as you love God and help us to walk closer to you and to God's will each and every day. Teach us that, we pray. Give us strength and help us along. For we ask this in Jesus' great name. Amen. All right. Well, now comes the time in our morning praise and worship time to bring our offering before the Lord. And of course, uh, only those who are here, those few of us who are here setting up this uh, live broadcast are able to do so. Everyone else, you'll have to uh, send your check in or do follow one of the guidelines that you can, you, you can mail your check into First United Methodist Church, PO Box 157, Madisonville, Tennessee, uh, zip code is 37354, or you can call ahead, call the church office uh, to see if anyone is here, Reba or Sue or myself. Uh, uh, we're here two or three weekday mornings until COVID-19 seems to get really beaten down in Monroe County. Uh, we're, not gonna, we're not showing up every morning uh, as we usually do. But you can call first, see if someone's here, or call one of us at home. Uh, I'm here uh, a couple of mornings a week and, and several afternoons a week. Uh, so, so call first, or maybe the best thing to do is just go online to oneumcm.com, and you can, uh, you can click on the tithing tab. There you'll find a one-stop shop for all matters regarding your offering, whether you want to send a, a cash or a check or online using a credit card or a bank draft. Well, let us, uh, let us pray and thank God for all that he has given us 
and for the privilege we have to give back to him. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for your generousness to our lives. We thank you that you give to us far more than we could ever pay back or, or ever give back. We pray, Lord, that these gifts and tithes and offerings that we make today and this week may go for the work of Jesus Christ, the continued work of Jesus Christ in this church and this congregation and beyond. We pray, Lord, that you will bless this congregation, bless every person in this church, all the members and all those who attend, all those who are part of our worship and praise. And we ask the Lord that you will help us to give to you and for your purpose, even as you have given so generously to us. We remember that our Lord Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And with his guidance in mind, we pray, Lord, that you will bless the gifts and the givers now and every day. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 13 again. I hope to have my Bible in hand. Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. You can read along in any translation or any Bible that you have there at home. We've been looking for the last couple of weeks at the parables of Jesus. We're going to look at a couple more today from uh, Math, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Then Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what the prophet, what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. <clears throat> and then, over in verse 44, we're going to read a couple more parables. Verses 44, 45, and 46. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like, <clears throat> excuse me, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you that you have loved us with a perfect love. You have loved us far beyond what, what we can even understand. And now, Lord, as we look into the teachings of Jesus, into the parables that he gave, we pray, Lord Jesus, that these parables will be real and alive for us as much as they were for the disciples and, and many others who listened nearly 2,000 years ago. Help us, Lord, put your word into practice in our lives each and every day. Help us become the person you want us to be for the sake of Jesus, our Savior. And we ask the Lord that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts together might be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How are you on generosity? Lucille Case told of what her parents saw one Sunday at the church where they attend. A young family regularly sits behind my parents during morning worship, Lucille said. 
Every Sunday when the offering is taken, the father gives each of his children a dollar to put in the collection plate. One Sunday, their little boy, Dusty, brought a friend to church. As my father passed the offering plate to his family, Dusty, without a second thought, took his dollar bill, tore it in half, and gave a half a dollar to his friend to place in the plate. Generous, thoughtful. Well, these parables that Jesus taught tell us today about God's generosity and God's kindness to us. The first, first, let's remember, what the parables teach, well, they were, the parables of Jesus were so effective because they told the, the people God's truth in simple stories based on everyday things around them. He wasn't a, a, a philosopher who, who talked in uh, high-minded ideals uh, above the heads of so many people. Jesus told everyday stories about everyday things around him. So what about this mustard seed? Well, in the Middle East, there is a very small seed, a mustard seed. Not actually the truly smallest seed on the planet, but it is still very small. Yet the bush that grows from one mustard seed can be nearly the size of many of the trees in that region. And so everyone who heard what Jesus was saying knew what he meant. What about the parable of the leaven? Well, in fact, the parable of the mustard seed leads directly into the parable of the leaven. Like leaven spreads throughout the bread dough, it strengthens the dough and makes it rise. In similar fashion, as the Christian faith has grown among every people group on earth, over the years, the Christian church has had more and more positive impact on every nation and every society. Certainly not perfect, certainly not perfect, but Christianity with our high ideals challenge us to live up to the highest ideals. And that makes a difference. Well, what about the two parables of great worth in verses 44 and 45? Well, there can be no doubt that Jesus here was telling his disciples and those who listened that the gospel of God's love and salvation is worth more than anything else. But you remember last week, we said every parable had a main point. So what are the main points of these different parables? Well, in the parable of the mustard seed, Jesus meant that though the Christian church started small, he predicted that the church would grow and grow and grow and grow in influence. Now that didn't seem very likely at the time to Jesus' disciples. It didn't seem very likely even to those who first heard Matthew's gospel written down and read to them 30 or 40 or 50 years after the resurrection of Jesus. Yet we know that the Christian church in barely 300 years after the first Christian Pentecost, which was the birthday of the church, we read about that in Acts chapter 2, the fifth book of the New Testament. The Christian faith in 300 years became the largest and the favored religion in the Roman Empire. Later, when the Roman Empire collapsed in the West, in, in Italy and, and Europe, it was the Christian church that held people's lives and society together across Europe and across Greek and, and Greece and, and Turkey and east of there. Actually, that was the, the Eastern Roman Empire. It went on for another thousand years. It's called the Byzantine Empire, but, but it was the Christian church, east and west, that kept people's lives together and kept society from degenerating into, into just chaos. The parable of the mustard seed and of the leaven remind us of the growing positive influence that Christianity has around us. I think it was Norman Vincent Peale who often taught a quotation given almost 200 years ago by the missionary William Carey. William Carey said, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. That's an important goal and attitude for Christians to hold. I think it's really an attitude that
that Christians have had for many centuries before William Carey ever voiced it and put it into a, a, a nice condensed quote. What Jesus taught in the parable of the mustard seed is that God can do far more than we can imagine or dream on our own. And that is what the apostle tells us in the letter to the Ephesians in chapter 3, verse 20. It reads, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. What are the things affected by dedicated followers of Jesus Christ in terms of the Christian faith being a leaven to society, a leavening society? Uh, well, one example, one example, William Wilberforce grew up in England in the late 1700s. As a teenager, he was greatly influenced by the Church of England ministers who were founders of the Methodist Evangelical Movement, George Whitfield and John Wesley. When he was 25 years old and been to college and had entered politics, his faith deepened. And one of the things that he and a lot of other Christians like him felt was important to their Christian faith was to end slavery. He made friendship with John Newton author of the hymn, Amazing Grace. Newton had been a captain of a slave ship when he was younger, a slave ship, an English slave ship that sold African persons to colonies in the Caribbean before his conversion to Christ and going into the ministry as a pastor in the Church of England. Wilberforce, Wilberforce worked with Newton and many others for years, for, for 20 or 30 years, to convince the people of England to abolish slavery. Finally, in February of 1807, Parliament voted 283 to 16 to end slavery. On March 25th, 1807, King George III, the very king that, that Americans revolted against to, to establish the United States of America, King George III gave his royal assent to the new law to abolish slavery. That's what Christians did out of their convictions that all people should be free. The growth of the sciences and the women's rights movements came out of nations which were predominantly Christianized. Now, there are a lot of conservative Christian leaders who have had to be convinced that these movements were God's will, but it's nonetheless Jesus' attitude that if the Son will set you free, you shall be free indeed, that helped in, in many ways to propel these movements. And the two short parables, what are their main points? Very simple. The gospel is of greater value than anything else. But for any person, if there is any activity or possession, that keeps her or him from committing their lives to follow Jesus Christ, give it up. It is not worth it. Knowing Jesus as our Savior, knowing the life-transforming love and power of his strength and wisdom in our lives is worth more than all the gold in Fort Knox or the most precious pearl on earth. Well, you find I, I, I have to ask the children, in the children's message, a question. I've got one for all of us. Do you remember learning about the gladiator battles in the Roman Colosseum in the days of the ancient Roman Empire? If you saw the movie Gladiator about 20 years ago, it showed a lot about this. Well, part of the sport consisted in watching as human beings battled with wild beasts or against one another until one or the other was killed. Modern bullfighting in Spain and Mexico are all that is left of the gladiator games that 18 and 19 and 20 centuries ago were held weekly not only in Rome, but in many of the Roman provinces. They were the equivalent of the college and professional football games of today and of baseball and basketball games in their seasons. Uh, that, that, 
those game, the uh, modern games are much less bloody and 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 in death than the ancient Colosseum games. We're going to look at that in a second. In the first and second centuries, Christians were burned at the stake in the Colosseum or made to face wild lions or bears or 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 uh, bulls who would rip them to shred. But whatever happened to the contest in the Colosseum? I'll tell you. By the year AD 400, when Honorius was emperor of Rome, Christians were no longer put to death there. Christianity by that time was the favored religion in the empire. But the great Colosseum of Rome was still often filled to overflowing with spectators. They came from far and wide to view the state games. The assembled multitude made Roman holiday of such sport and found its highest delight in the death of a human being. It was on such a day when the vast crowd was watching the contest that a Christian monk from Syria by the name of Telemachus came to the Colosseum. He had come to Rome to visit the sites of the graves of the apostles Peter and Paul and to see the great city. He visited the Colosseum and he was stunned at the violence on the floor of the Colosseum and appalled at the slaughter in the arena. Telemachus was torn by the utter disregard for the value of human life and so he leaped into the arena in the midst of the gladiatorial show and cried out, this thing is not right. This thing must stop. He was knocked down, but he got right back up and shouted loudly with passion and with compassion, this thing is not right. This thing must stop. Some people shouted that he should be stoned, but others grew quiet to hear him. Because he was interfering with their pleasure, the authorities gave the command for Telemachus to be run through with a sword, which was done by one gladiator. Thus Telemachus died, still crying out, this is not right, this must stop. But a hush fell over the crowd. A holy man, a Christian minister of peace and grace had been struck down as if he were just another beast to be killed. In dying, he kindled a flame in the hearts and consciences of thinking persons. History records that because of the courageous act of Telemachus, within a few months, the gladiatorial combats began to decline, and very shortly they passed from history. Why? Because one person had the courage to speak out against what he knew was right against what he knew was wrong. Now there are still wrong things for Christians to demand to be made right in our nation and in our world today. Lynching has largely been rooted out through our laws and the diligent work of federal and state and local law enforcement and the promotion among all people that lynching, which is murder for reasons of hatred and dehumanizing other persons, Lynching is wrong. I, most people understand that now. However, even the hanging of ropes in a noose to imitate lynching is wrong. If it's meant as a joke, I mean to tell you, it's not funny. And if it is meant as a serious threat, then Telemachus was right. This is not right. This must stop. I'll tell you one other thing. Enslaving of women and teenage girls for prostitution still happens around the world and even in this country. I said slavery was ended in England in 1807 and it was ended in the United States after the Civil War by 1865. And, and with, slavery is not legally supported. I, I, I can't think of a country in the world that legally supports slavery, but there's sex slavery that still goes on under the, under the radar. And uh, it is treated as a crime in many, many countries, but it still goes on. And what, what I'm talking about is young women and girls, some of them as young as 10 years old, mostly teenagers, are taken from their home country and sold as sex slaves to be sent to other countries as forced prostitutes. 
It even happens in the USA. In recent years, law enforcement experts have said that one of the highest trafficking, of, trafficking events in the U.S. for forced teen prostitution, get ready, it's Super Bowl weekend. Friends, brothers and sisters, there are still a lot of things in our nation and in our world that need to be corrected, that need to be changed, wrong things, even sinful and criminal practices which the people of God must stand against. If Jesus Christ is truly our Savior, if the gospel is truly that pearl of great price that is worth more than anything, then let us share that message and tell people to put hatred and violence and destructive behaviors behind us and follow Jesus Christ every day, every evening, every night, every hour, every week. Let us follow Jesus all the time and put all those old things behind us. Let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you that you teach us that the gospel of Jesus Christ is worth more than anything in all the world and will spread and will continue to spread across the earth. We pray, O Lord, that as the gospel continues to uh, touch lives all over this nation, all over this continent, all over every continent, and all over the face of the earth. We pray, Lord Jesus, that your guidance and devotion to you will make all the difference in how people treat one another. That all of us will become more loving and more forgiving not prone to hold grudges, but to forgive one another, to be reconciled to one another as you reconcile us to you. Lord Jesus, we pray that, that you will help us to be part of the leavening, leveling, leavening influence in our nation and in our world as we spread the good news of Jesus Christ, as we live the good news of Jesus Christ, as our attitudes and our priorities are guided by the good news of Jesus Christ, Lord, we hope that we pray that we will each do our part in seeing the world become a better place than it was yesterday or last year or, or a century. Help us, Lord, to do all we can to spread your gospel and be a positive influence on everyone around us. We ask this, we pray this, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing one more hymn this morning. I love thy kingdom, Lord. I love thy kingdom, Lord. Reba.
do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go with the Lord. 